Oh, hello, and thank you for joining me. I'm Tim Botuk, and this is A Joy of Painting Middle Earth, a time when we come together to paint the most fantastic landscapes Middle Earth has to offer. And maybe we'll paint a scary one a time or two. That can be quite fun, you know. Now, I may not be the best painter in the Shire, but I do love it so, and I'd love for you to paint right along with me. So if you're ready, grab your paints and your brushes, and let's go on an adventure. All right, thank you again, thank you again for joining me. We've got our canvas prepared and we're ready to go. How did we prepare the canvas? We put a layer of liquid white, or that magic white as we call it. Why do we call it that? Because we were taught how to paint by the blue wizard, Bob Ross the Blue. That's right. Now, following his instruction, we've put our white liquid white right on there and you can see just a fingerprint through. If your finger is totally white, you have too much. If you can't see any white on there at all, you haven't got enough. But we've put that on there. Now we have a clean dry brush and we're ready to go. And what are we painting today? Well, well, we are painting. We are painting in Rohan. That's right. You know it, the Horseman's Kingdom. So, we're just going to jump right into our sky, and we're going to make today a bit of a dark sky. So, I've got ultramarine blue. I meant to go with thalo blue, but I accidentally grabbed the ultramarine blue. So, we're just going to darken this up with some ivory black. There we go. There we go. Maybe... Take some of our titanium white, because we want this to be kind of a grayish. We want it to be a grayish blue. That's what we're looking for. There we go. Just mix them together there on your palette. Oh, I'm probably going to have to mix a whole bunch more than that. But let's start with that. Let's just go in here, and we're going to have it. We're going to have some clouds in there today. So... We're just going to put this in. It's not a super bright sunny day. If you have to, on your easel, you're going a little rough at it, and you have to put a big old hobbit foot on there to steady it out, go ahead and do that. There we go. Just mix that in. That gives us just kind of a base to go off of. Soften it out. And what we'll do, we don't want to mix it all together. We're going to come back in. We're going to come back in and we're going to go more to some of our blue. Just get that in there. And we're just going to mix some blue in there where maybe you see peeking through the sky, peeking through the clouds. Just again. Oh, I hope I didn't grab any green. Green doesn't look good in the sky. No, no. Put more of that in there. There we go. We'll just mix this together. Take some more of that blue. There we are. Just right up here. There we go. Put it in. And we're going to have some mountains and things down here. So we're just making this sky right now. There we go. And go to those crisscross strokes that just kind of softens it up. There we go. Now we've got that laid down. We're going to go again to more of a darker gray. We want some ominous clouds in there. That's right. That's right. Now we're going to come and now we're going to start just rounding this these strokes in here, just rounding them in. Go back and pick up some color. There we go. We just want some variations there, some variations in the colors. Let's 
go to our rubbish bin, just knock some of that paint right off the brush. There we go. You see, normally when I paint outside, I just beat my beat my brush on the easel, but I can't do that when I'm inside the habit hole. Oh, it makes a dreadful mess. That's right. So we have a rubbish bin down there. We just beat the Sauron out of the brush down there. Lightly, this is a very light touch now. And what we begin to see, we begin to see where those clouds have formed. And you can kind of see through that blue sky through there. All right. And we'll come, we'll come to a fan brush here. Now we've got one of our fan brushes. We're just going to come right in to our titanium white and just load that up on the brush. That's what we do. Just load it up. And we're just going to come in with the corner of that brush. And we're going to find some areas. Put this in. There we go. Just circle that in. And look at the way your clouds have formed on here. There we go. When you're picking up a little bit of that paint, you can just knock it off right onto the palette. Go back in to your titanium white. Just pick that up. Load it up again on the brush. There we go. And just circle it in. There we are. And don't worry, we'll come and soften these back out again as well. Just circle that in. There we are. Giving different shapes here. There we go. Now we can even come back to some of that color we had knocked off the brush. Pick that up and start putting some other areas in there. There we go. Now, once we've done some of that, let's soften those out. Let's soften those out. We're just going to take a clean, dry brush. All right. We have our one inch brush here and we're just going to lightly soften the bottom edges, leaving the top, leaving the top there. There we go. Just circle that in and you can see this gives us very quickly. We've put in a sky that has a lot of different variations, a lot of clouds. Some are closer, some are farther away. There we go. Now we've softened that out a bit. Oh, Now that we've softened that out a bit, we're going to come back with a two inch brush and we are just going to be the wind lifting those clouds up. Just blending this together. There we go. And this gives us such a nice sky. If you have to, not too hard. Don't throw paint all over your habit hole. Maybe knock a little off. Come back to it. These are actually my favorite kind of days. Those days where you just have those clouds. You're not sure what they're going to do or where they're going to go. There, there we go. Now, Now let's, let's come back and 
And before we get into our mountains, I want to give these clouds a little bit of a shine to them. I'm just going to take a very tiny bit of our cadmium lemon that we're using today. Just a tiny bit. We just mix that in. Just mixing it with this. I picked up this smaller palette knife when I was doing a bit of traveling a few months ago, and I had to run out and buy a paint set just to be able to, while I was on the road, be able to still put up a painting for you. You'd want to see that, wouldn't you? So I did. I picked up an acrylic paint set, which I need to get back to and try some more of those. But uh, this little this little brush came in that set. Not brush, palette knife. Much smaller than one that I normally use. But we're going to try this. Be a little more exacting. And right here, right where you see some some colors, we're just going to put this sun-tipped sun -tipped clouds in here. Just to give it a little more brightness. And we'll come back and soften these out as well. Now this is, this is more of one of those techniques if you're spending a long time on a painting and you know you and I, we like to, we like to do them pretty fast. Just so you can get on with your day. You could sit here and do this for hours and hours and get just the right highlights. That's fun too, that's a day if you just want to relax. You can do that as well. And I'm just picking up a little bit at a time, little bit at a time, and just come in here and just trying to give some highlight on some of those edges. And you see, when I come back, I've picked up a little bit of the gray and I just wipe it off over there and just come back and pick up some more of that. There we go. And this, again, it's just a gentle, a gentle touch on there. And we don't want to do them all over the place. That way it'd be too much, too much. We just want to find a few spots and highlight those. These, of course, would be the tallest parts of those clouds. Parts that, parts that just reach up and catch just a little bit of that sun. And this might be the morning sun. There we go. All right. Now, you can, of course, you can do more of those. You want to keep highlighting those, but I just wanted to, to touch on a few. And then, again, what we'll do, coming back to our two inch brush, we're just going to lift those and pull those off and just soften those out a bit. And that gives you just some golden clouds for the golden hall. There we go. Uh, 
And these are wet oil paints. You can sit there and move them and play with them all day long. That's right. You just get it to a place you want and then say, okay, Timbo, I think it's time we move on to some of those mountains. But just know, just know you can spend, you can spend a whole lot of time on those clouds and just really make them look that much richer. But you can do that. I know you can. All right. All right. Now, we are coming into Rohan. Well, we're riding through Rohan. That's right, riding south. And the Great Hall of Edoras will be down here. But before we do that, he's got some of those mountains in the back. So let's come in just that grayish color we used before. We'll just mix up and get a... A nice dark color for our mountains. Maybe grab some alizarin crimson and put in there. Just pick that all up. There we go. Flatten it out. There we are. That gives us a color to put under for the rock. There we go. Now, I'm going to just Clean off my knife. Now this part, we're just putting in the shape of the rock. Just the shape of the rock. We just cut off a row of paint and we come in here and, and we're giving ourselves some mountain things. There we go. Maybe a mountain comes there. We're just marching this mountain range. Just let's start way over here, way over here. It comes up and comes down. There we go. Now, just, you don't have to think about it too much. These mountains, they just come along. No specific mountain that we're painting today, but just give ourselves some peaks and bring it down. There we go. As I said, these are just off all in the back, all in the back. These would be that white mountain range. You know, you know, we, we painted this not too long ago. Not too long ago, we were together and we painted the Beacons of Gondor. That's right. There we go. There we go. Just... Our... Beacon would be up there somewhere. Maybe there's some mountains you can see off in the back there and then just come right in front of that one there. There we go. So you can see that might be a valley you try and climb to go through. There we go. There we go. Now we just have that line, that mountain range that marches across, marches across our background. That's just the backdrop there. There we go. Now, wipe off that knife. Now we take our clean, dry brush. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pull these mountains down. We're just pulling out some of this color. There we go. Maybe. Just leave that edge up there. There you go. Leave the edge. We'll come back and we'll give the mountains some detail when we come. There we are. Just bringing off this extra paint. 
giving our mountain some shape in here. Try and leave that edge as nice as you can. There we go. Pull that right in front. If you're picking up paint, knock it off. Knock it off the brush. Come back and pull the mountains down. And we'll have some foothills in front of these. There we go. We just want to just pull that down, pull it down. There we are. Just fill it in with that dark color. We've got quite a bit of our liquid white on there. So you can see as we pull that dark down, it just mixes with it right away. That's okay. That's okay. Now tap it. That'll create the mist at the base of those mountains. There we go. Just tap that up. And there's some snow on top of those mountains. There's some snow up there. So, let's see. It looks like our light is shining this way because that's how it's picking up those clouds. So that should mean our light should pick up this side of the mountain and then this side coming in from the right should be the dark side of the mountain. So let's come with a highlight color on that first. We... Just picking up some of these colors. The shadow color, put a little bit of blue in there. There we go. There we go. So don't, don't mix it so it's flat. But that color is going to be on this side, any side that'll be on the right side of the mountain. So we just put it in there. There we go. Just like that. Come back. There we are. Do the same over here. Just pull it down lightly. Just touch onto the canvas. There we go. That's a bit of a valley there, so it's not getting much sunlight yet. Not getting much sunlight yet. There we are. Mixing more of that color up. As I said, it just needs to be this dull color. Oh, I got a little bit more white than I was ready to put in there. That's okay, that's okay. We don't make mistakes. We just make happy accidents. That's what the blue wizard Bob Ross the Blue had taught us all along. There we go. And mix that in. Mix that in there. There we go. Again, we don't want to spend all of our time on here because we'll be coming back.
Pick it up, mix it together. There we are. Grab some of that blue. Maybe need a bit more white. There we go. Throw a bit more blue in there so it's nice and cold looking. There we go. There we go. And not to worry, we'll come back and put the rest of the highlights in. Darken that up a bit. That was a little light in there. And come back right over the top of that. Mixing that together. There we go. There we go. Alrighty. Let's move this out of our way. Let's put it over there for now. Let's clean off our knife. Okay, let's give some highlights. Oh, my knife is coming apart. All right, let's give some highlights on these mountains. Maybe take some of that gold that we had in there. That's right. Just cut a row, cut a row. And now we give this the highlight side. That's where the light is touching the mountain there. Down. Get some more. Just come up. There we go. Right in that little valley. And these white highlights just make our mountain pop out. Cut it across. There we go. And just give some up here. There we are. Whoops! I always do that. I always hit, hit my palette on the easel. As long as we don't knock the painting off it again. All right. Right in there. There you see, just where the sun is coming in. Shining on that one. Oh, I picked up a little bit of the darker color on that one. That's okay. That's how the canvas helps us make these shapes. It does, it does. Let's see. Pick up with our smaller side so we can take some of these details here. There we go. Just catching that sun, that morning sun on that side. And We'll come in here. Catching it there. There we are.
There we go. So for the most part, those mountains are pretty dark. Pretty dark. Because they're still on that dark morning side of the mountains. We'll just put where the sun is picking up right on the tops of the mountains. Right there. Alright. A little more over here. And maybe one more on this far back one. There we go. That gives us, that gives us a nice mountain range to build the rest of our painting right in front of. There we go. All right, let's do some foothills and things. Maybe, maybe even before we do that, we come and we darken the side of the mountain even more. Where no light is getting to it. There we go. When we do that, that really gives us contrast in our paintings. There we go. And it gives us some things in this mountain we didn't know were hiding in there. There we are. Now that keeps it from being too dull, too boring, not telling quite enough of a grand story. Because that's what we're doing. When we paint, we're just telling, telling a different kind of story. But it's all a story. Everything has a story. There we go. All right. Now let's just give ourselves some room to mix up some more colors. There we go. We'll just put that off over there. Maybe we'll use it a little bit later. There we go. All right. Let us clean off this brush. Okay, so we're going to do some dark foothills down here. And those, the base of that is going to be green, of course. And, but we want it to be a very dark green. Maybe put in some of our blue and our ivory black. There we go. Now these foothills will just come up. They're here. What that does is that lets us know that those mountains are even further off in the distance than we realize. That's right. And then just tap it in. These are covered with grass. There's not too many trees in this, this part of Middle Earth. So we're not going to be doing a lot of trees today. But 
just tap it in. There's some rolling hills where the grass is. And put your big old hobbit foot on there. Keep it under control. That's right. Keep it under control. You can even mix it in like this. That makes sure we cover all of it. Gives us some nice shadow in there. This grass, it's all kind of dried and yellow. It's been there a long time. And so we'll come in and we'll... We'll do that. We'll do that a little bit later. Now that we've gone and done that, now we have to, oh, we have to put in our kingdom here, Edoras. I'm going to put our kingdom here. So I may want to scrape some of the paint off that I've already put down. Now, I wasn't thinking about that as I did it. I just wanted to come off the brush or the, the palette knife naturally. That way it didn't seem like I had it all just right in there. So what I'm going to do is cut out a shape for our kingdom. Okay, so again, this is a bit of a mountain that had crumbled right out there in the middle of the plain, close to our white mountains. So what we want to do is first, we're going to give, now that we've taken all that paint off, we're going to come back in and, and give this some undercolor. There we go. As we paint that village, and of course the Golden Hall, right up on top of this. Now I know doing things like this takes a little bit of a time. You have to be a little more exact than when you are painting just a tree, which the canvas can help you decide how it's going to look. And trees and nature take their own course. They're not too exact. Not like things, not like things that men build. They're, they always seem perfect. But they're too perfect in their perfectness, so that makes them not perfect. Not like a tree. A tree is a perfect creation. That's right. A mountain is a perfect creation. Men can build all the things they think they can build, but they'll never build a beautiful mountain. Oh, they'll never build a tower all the way out to the sun. That's right. They can try, they can try. We can give them credit for trying, but eventually they'll learn. All right, so this is, this is where we're at, coming up to Edoras. So, I think that this smaller palette knife, this might be the perfect tool for trying to recreate this. And since much of this is wooden, we're just going to create this wooden color that we can put our thatch tall on. There we go. Come right up here. Right at the top is our golden hall. That's right, you can see it from far off, especially if you're an elf. There 
There we go. And we'll come back and put on... We'll come back and put the roof on there. That thatch that's so golden you would think it was wove out of gold. That's right. You would think that Theoden's ancestors had woven it out of gold. So we just put this in here. There we are. There we go. Now let's, let's come to our, our cadmium lemon. That's a little too gold. So we're going to put some yellow ochre in there. It's a little too yellow. We want to make this a nice glimmering gold color. We'll highlight it with that yellow where maybe, maybe the sun is capturing it. There we go. Let's put our thatched roof right on here. There we go. There we go. The golden hall, the golden hall. These are little details that mostly I like painting with big brushes and doing broad strokes, but every now and then our story just means that we've got to we've got to put in some smaller details. Now I know many of you are much better at these details than me. But I still try. I still try it. There we go. Now I'm going to take a little bit of green and some of my yellow. And we'll just come up and put this in. Still using our knife. Still using our knife. Because, of course, we're very far away. If we are much closer, we would need, oh, we'd need much better details. But, ah, you see what I did? I made us paint it from very far away. That way you wouldn't have to worry about my painting skills when it comes to buildings and things like that. There we go. And we'll just bring this out. Some people do whole paintings with palette knives like this. And that's fun too, that's fun too. Mix it up just like that. There we go. And let's just... There we go. We're just going to fill some of this in. Some of this grassy area. But again, we need to put some more buildings and things because it's not just the king sitting right up on top. No, no, no. But by doing this with the palette knife, we get those rocks and things that stick through on a hill like this. There we go. All right, now, well, we do need to maybe give, 
there's some steps and things that go up to the hall, and it sits on a foundation of rock. There we are. And those steps come down. There we go. Okay. Now these these kingdoms have some some village houses around them. And so we just put some uh, that green. I maybe put too much too much grass in there to begin with, but that's okay. That's okay. These guys. Rows of houses where the residents live. And we, this can be tedious. You can go through for hours and hours making these houses. That, that does get to be a bit tedious. You just want to give them shapes and things. This is what our city will look like. There we go. Building here, a building there. Maybe one sticks up right here. A little bit of a tower there. This here. Make it a whole marketplace or something. That's right. This is where the residents of Rohan will come and trade their goods. And what we're doing is we're just putting the basic shapes, the basic shapes of buildings down here. And you can come back in and put some roofs and things on there. You can take all kinds of time to do this if you want. We'll just put this in. One back here. More here. And what you want to do is you just want to, just so you can see the green between the buildings, you just know that this is built right on the side of the hill. Now, the one thing we do need to do, we need to make sure we put that fence all the way around. That's right. Let's come in here with our fan brush. And we'll just put that brown on there. And we're going to put that fence that goes all the way around. You start to pick up the paint. Just flip it over. Knock some of that off. Load it back up on both sides of your fan brush. And just come back into it and build that wall. Every kingdom has a wall. There we go. Even if you're coming around this corner and you have to turn your fan brush like this, don't pull the wall this way. It's not built like that. Just pull it straight down. 
straight down. There we go. There we go. This would be a good defense. Against those orcs. Not for long though, not with as many orcs as Saruman set upon the kingdom of Rohan. There we go. There we go. Turn your brush if you're doing littler details here. That goes all the way around. All the way around the mountain, it does. There we are. Now, we'll come back here and fix up some of these, some of these houses and things in here. Bring down this way and that. All right, now we're going to come some of our yellow ochre, we'll bring it up here, put in a little bit of that white. These thatch is not quite as, as golden as the other, but we're going to thin this out, some of our paint thinner, and we'll come back on because we know a thin paint sticks to a thick paint. And that's how we'll get this our roof color to stick on here. We thin that out. And just with the corner of that fan brush, a raggedy old fan brush, just come in and get that roof color to stick. And that just gives a shade of difference between what we had down there we go so we put in all the basic shapes of those buildings and then we come back and we put that roof color on there and that contrast to the dark against the light is what gives us the detail that we can tell our mind is the difference between those wooden buildings and the thatched roof that's on top of each. And again, you can take all day and you can make that look as much like a city as you want. And then maybe we come back and we just put some tips to our fence. There we go. Just give a top there on that fence. And then of course, we'll need a gate. We'll need a gate for that fence. Just come with some of our yellow ochre to give us some posts where that gate would be. There we go. There we are. There we are, it's Edoras, the Golden Hall. 
Now what we're going to do is, these are our grasslands, so let's, let's come up with a nice, nice grassy color. Maybe some of that golden yellow. And we'll do that right around the base there. There we go. Just put in some hills. There we are. Now let's go back, go back to our two inch brush. And let's just come into our grassy color. A little bit of green there. There we go. Just tap that into your brush. Mix it in. And we'll just come and just give these plains some grass. With our blue, maybe some alizarin and crimson into that. Some of our black. It's a nice dark color to make these hills back here. Those rolling hills. There we go. There we go. Now, I know we've been at this a while, but We've been at this a while, but we do want to put some some grasses and things closer to us. Let's maybe not go into our yellow first. Let's go into our let's go into this dark green. Let's darken that up. Darken that up a bit. And then These that are closest to us, we want to make some longer, taller grass here. That'll be blowing in the wind. And come to some of our greens. There we go. We just want to add this in, make it look like a grassy, grassy plain. There we go. Once we have that darker color in there, let's wash off our brush. Come back to our yellow. There we go. Some yellow on there, and now let's give it some longer this dried grass here. That's all we're doing. Just giving some grass for the horses in this land of the horse masters to feed off of. There we go. That just gives us something in the foreground to look at. There we are. All right. Now you can go back in and you can give this all kinds of detail and you can even let it dry a bit if you want. Sometimes it's easier to come back in and give some details when that all gets dry and you're not fighting against the painting you put on. Now, when it comes to clouds and trees and other things, doing the wet on wet technique can be very fun, very effective, and very fast, so you can get through a painting very quickly. 
But in a case like this, you may want to come back in and, and fix up those details and give that, that village some life. That's right. All right. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time on The Joy of Painting Middle-Earth. Goodbye and God bless. Thank you for joining me on today's painting. I'm so happy you were with me. Now, if you'd like to continue to go on painting adventures with me, become part of my fellowship. And you do that by clicking that subscribe button below. Yes, and be sure to give it a like and a share. That would be oh so helpful. Now, we don't know how many of these seeing stones are unaccounted for. So we don't know who else is watching. I've got to go. Have a good day.